hi guys welcome back to my channel and in today's video I want to share 25 bush 25 bookish facts about me I thought this would be a great way to start off 2019 I am so grateful to be here and I'm so grateful each for each and every single one of you and that you've subscribed to my channel and have joined the Osh fam and I know that there are a lot of okay already starting off on a great foot for 2019 can't talk as usual but there are a lot of you that are new and that have recently subscribed and recently joined the Osh fam so I thought this would be a perfect time to do a 25 facts about me video so you can get to know me a little bit better and these are bookish facts so even better so here we go 25 bookish facts about me Mwah. number one I read every single day every single day no, really, every single day. <laughs> For the most part, unless I'm in a reading slump. But 90% of the time, I read every single day. Number two is I read myself to sleep. I don't know, it's a self-soothing thing, but there's nothing more comforting to me than just laying in my bed, all snuggled up underneath the covers, with my lights off, and my sound app going with like the sound of the waves and the wind and, and all that goodness, and my nightlight on. Don't judge me, I hate to be in pitch dark. I cannot sleep in pitch blackness. And then I have like my Kindle going and I'm kind of snuggled up on my side. I sleep on my side. Those of you that sleep on your backs, you're serial killers and the demons will get you. But yes, I sleep on my side and I'm just kind of just reading and I'm so into the story and then there's just that gentle glow from the light from the Kindle. Not too bright, I like it kind of dim. Oh my gosh, and I just, I'm out like a light within 20 to 30 minutes. I get my reading in. And then I'm out. Number three is that I prefer reading via Kindle or paperback more than anything else, although I purchase more hardbacks than anything else because I tend to pre-order a lot of books and here in America, especially young adult books come out in hardback first and then you have to wait like a year for the paperback and I'm just really bad at waiting. I'm very impatient when I want something. I just, I want it in my hands ASAP, even if I'm not going to read it ASAP. Something I should probably work on, but it is what it is. So I pre-order a lot of books and they usually come in hardback copy or I buy a lot from Book Outlet and they're usually in hardback copy. And so I have more hardbacks on my shelf, but when it comes to actually what I prefer, I prefer either a paperback book or Kindle. Number four is that I consider myself to be a book collector and not just a book reader or a reader as a hobby. I also consider myself to be a collector. So it's really nothing to me to own more than one edition of a book, especially if it's one of my favorite books. If a particularly beautiful edition comes out, Oh, I'm also a sucker for like beautiful editions of classics and childhood favorites. But if something comes out and it catches my eye and I find it to be gorgeous, I'm going to purchase it. And it doesn't matter to me if I already have like two other editions. I'm just, I'm a sucker for a beautiful book and a beautiful edition of my favorite novels. Because I also see books at, as decor as well. I just like having them around me. Like it's a cozy thing for me. I just, I just really enjoy that feeling and that vibe to a home. Number five. I don't really know who I would be without reading. I kind of credit reading with giving me a better quality of life and majorly lowering my anxiety. Number six, my current most read genres are urban fiction. Bleh, you guys know I hate that title, but it is what it is. Black literature and or African American fiction and African American literature and new adult those are my three most current, most read genres, and my favorite genre is fantasy. I love me a good fantasy, y'all, and with a good, strong, like, adventure plotline mixed in with a romance plotline, you have got me. You can take all my coins. Number seven, I strongly believe that my obsession with the Babysitter's Club when I was younger heavily heavily influenced my decision to become a nanny in my early 20s i was a nanny i was a nanny pretty much throughout my later college years throughout my early 20s and i credit that to let's see if i can remember all their names mallory dawn jesse was there a danielle or a sunny oh this is getting marianne and stacy ah and claudia and claudia I credit them for that. Was it Dawn or Sunny? Did I make Sunny up? 
Dawn was definitely one. Okay, let's do it again. We have Christy, Dawn, Marianne, Mallory, Jesse, Claudia, and Stacy. Yeah, there are only seven of them, right? Am I missing someone? Let me know. Number eight, the American Girl Dolls and those catalogs, and then of course the subsequent novels, were my first actual experience with American history. Because of those books, I became enthralled and enraptured by history in general and went on to be fully captivated throughout my teenage and like early 20 years. And I became enthralled and captivated by history and historical fiction after that. Number nine. I don't read scary books or watch scary films. I'm just, I'm a big believer in the spiritual and I'm a big believer in being very careful into what you allow into your mind, into your heart, into your spirit and into your space. And so for that reason alone, I'm just very choosy with what I consume, the content that I consume and a lot of the scary stuff is just a hard limit for me. Number 10. Reading romance novels, which for me started at age 11, and I still read them up until present day, but reading them back in my prepubescent, adolescent, and teenage years, honestly, gave me all the sex education I could ever want or need in my lifetime. It was to the point where I was schooling my girlfriends in middle school and high school. <laughs> they always came to me, and the irony was that I was um, not sexually active during those years and so it's just ironic that they were coming to me for answers and I'm like I know everything because I read these books I know I know now looking back I can say that I was actually pretty dang accurate about a lot of it I know books are fiction and you know everything's romanticized and glowy and everything's seen through rose tinted glasses but I was actually pretty dang accurate about quite quite a few things Go 11 to 20 year old me. Number 11, my most watched mm, book to movie adaptations and go. Twilight, Harry Potter, oh my gosh, Harry Potter, The Lord of the Rings, Little Women, Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, pretty much anything Jane Austen, but definitely those three, or those two rather. Sense and Sensibility and Pride of Prejudice, for sure. Number 12, the fact that I got to read the Harry Potter books as they were coming out and essentially grow up with Harry and Hermione and Ron and the gang honestly feels so special. Like that being a part of my childhood and me being a part of that very special once in a lifetime generation makes me just, ugh. I just, it gives me all the feels and it definitely makes me feel like that is a very special and precious thing and I definitely cherish that and cherish those memories. Number 13, almost nothing makes me happier than reading a well-written romance and if that romance has adventure and a strong female protagonist and healthy, you know, portrayals of love and there's consensual you know, stuff in there, nothing's too creepy or icky, and then you take all of that and it's all set in a fantasy world, I'm the happiest girl in the world. Book heaven. Number 14, I used to skip school a lot my junior and senior years of high school, and I would spend the day at this bookstore that doesn't exist anymore called Borders, and I would literally go there from the beginning of the day up until the end of the school day, just cozied up in their upstairs in one of their big, comfy, fluffy couches and read all day long. All day long. Number 15. Walking into a bookstore probably gives me the same rush the same high, the same euphoria that drug addicts get from their drug of choice. I kid you not, it is uh, tingly everything. Like, uh, just, I love it. Number 16, if I could do it all over again, I'd be a librarian or an audiobook narrator or a teacher and teach a course on black lit. Number 17, 
I was reading before I was speaking full proper sentences. Number 18. I've watched every single film adaptation of Little Women, Pride and Prejudice, and Sense of Sensibility that exists, including all of the made-for-TV movies and like TV episodic dramas, like you name it, I've seen them all. Number 19. I have been sorted into two different Hogwarts houses, Slytherin and Ravenclaw. Although I will admit that I definitely lean way more towards Slytherin. Number 20. I absolutely hate it when you lend out books to a friend and they come back completely destroyed and just unkempt and poorly taken care of or they never come back at all. That's probably why I never really lend out my books if I have a friend that I've recommended a book to, a book of mine, I will just buy them a copy via Amazon and have it shipped to their house. I am not playing those games today. You're not about to ruin my day. No ma'am. Number 21. Although I am a recovered book buying addict, I still do love buying books and I think I will always buy them. Um, I have thought about exclusively only using the library, but I don't think I could ever do that. A, because I am a collector, and B, because I really do love supporting the publishing industry, the book buying industry, whatever you want to call it, and I love supporting my favorite authors. As a future author myself, I just, I want to put that out there and I want to give back in hopes that the same will be done for me. Number 22, Team Edward, period. Number 23, I am a notorious rereader and proud. Number 24. If a plot is really getting to me, and by getting to me I mean giving me high, high levels of anxiety, I will uh, skip to the end and read just to make sure that everything is okay and calm my nerves. Or if I don't want to spoil myself, which happens with some books, I will read just a few chapters ahead just to kind of calm my nerves and get the worst out of the way. It's like, I just want to get the worst out of the way. The anticipation and building up to the worst is, is the worst. And finally, number 25, I do not believe that nice guys finish last. And I would like more romance plots written with nice guys. That would be so great. I'm tired of the whole bad boy trope that's not really a bad boy trope because bad boys are judged and stigmatized and just because a man wears a leather jacket or has a certain hairstyle or has tattoos and other body modifications does not make him a bad person. Just because he rides a motorcycle or does things outside of societal norms does not make him a bad person. That is stupid. That is a style, a mode of dress, you know, a way of living life does not make you a bad person. But I digress. I really am getting tired of this whole bad boy thing in romance. I would love to see some nice boys, some that aren't rude and don't bully the female protagonist and don't you know, mistreat her and all that jazz. I would like to see some nice guys and I would like to see them finish first for once. And that is it. That is 25, 25 bookish facts about me. And yeah, definitely share some interesting bookish facts about you down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video and comment and hit the notifications bell, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye. I will be hosting this book club with two other lovely ladies here on BookTube that have graciously decided to join with me and kind of pioneer this with me. My lovely, lovely hosts, let me introduce them to you. First up is Brittany from Melanin Eclectic. She is a jack of all trades, you guys. Her channel is fantastic and her makeup is flawless. She's so beautiful. 